Hello and welcome, followers of Adam, to my first video in a series examining the drinks of the Fallout series. This first installment covers the soft drinks of Fallout, whether you call them Coke, Soda, Pop, or Soda Pop. Soda is the only correct name if any of you are wondering. This video will examine what has become an iconic element of the Fallout franchise. So let's start this list with the one and only Nuka Cola. How else could I start a list like this, since Nuka-Cola has been part of Fallout's DNA from the very first game? Nuka-Cola was first brought to market in 2044 with John Caleb Bradburton as the inventor. Bradburton had worked on the formula for two years, eventually landing on a recipe that included 120% of the daily allowance of sugar. The American Heart Association recommends no more than 36 grams of sugar in a day. Which, if we use that metric, means that a bottle of Nuka-Cola contains a bit over 43 grams of sugar. The Fallout and Fallout 2 bottle design seems like an average glass bottle, meaning it is likely 12 fluid ounces, which would make Nuka-Cola just 4 grams of sugar more than a 12 ounce Mexican Coke. We can't know for sure what the daily allowance was in the Fallout world, and knowing Fallout's corporate America, the allowance was likely much higher than in the real world, so this is probably a conservative estimate. The character Dugan in Fallout 1 is the first Nuka-Cola addict that we encounter, claiming to drink a whopping 5 liters a day. Talk about life goals. Not only does he consume enough to give an adult horse kidney stones, he is very knowledgeable about the product, claiming that the ingredients are carbonated water, caramel color, aspartame, phosphoric acid, potassium benzoate to protect taste, natural flavors, citric acid, and caffeine. The caffeine is likely the reason why Dugan suffers from splitting headaches if he doesn't drink enough Nuka-Cola. But all these ingredients are fairly benign and the base ingredients for many kinds of colas. I find it interesting that sugar or high fructose corn syrup is not mentioned, but aspartame, which is an artificial sweetener, is mentioned. With aspartame being 200 times sweeter than sugar, and the soda already allegedly having 120% of the daily intake of sugar, this would have made Nuka-Cola insanely sweet. The devil is in the details, however, as we get some clues as to what the ambiguously named natural flavors are from other games. A Nuka World loading screen mentions 17 fruit flavors in addition to the cola, and Sierra Petrovita in Fallout 3 lets us know that at least one of those are passion fruit, since there was a passion fruit famine in 2044, which happens to be the same year Nuka Cola was brought to market, and the slight change to accommodate this dearth of passion fruit was noticed by everyone. The drink was advertised to be fortified with vita minerals and health tonics, which is just marketing bullcrap that means absolutely nothing. This is likely an homage to 19th and early 20th century health tonics that were mixtures of all sorts of ingredients that were purported to have great health benefits. The design of the bottle in Fallout and Fallout 2 is a standard looking glass bottle, although it appears that there was no label, and rather the drink information was on the glass itself, which is not as common nowadays but was more common for bottles prior to the late 1950s. The Nuka fanatic Dugan in Fallout 1 mentions that there is a diet version of Nuka Cola that he and his cohorts drank the entirety of. This is the only mention of a diet version of Nuka Cola in all of the games. The player character has a 15% risk of becoming addicted to Nuka-Cola in Fallout 1 and 2, which is not as bad as it might sound. The addiction itself has no status effects, with just a text prompt that says, you crave more Nuka-Cola. Even though Nuka-Cola does not have any status altering effects, it can be used to kill Big Jesus Mordino, whose health is teetering on the edge of oblivion. It can also be used as an ingredient in creating super stim packs which really makes you wonder which part of Nuka-Cola would be in any way useful to improve or recover health. Maybe all the sugar is meant to elevate blood sugar levels. And by elevate, I mean go completely hypoglycemic. Fallout Tactics changes the bottle slightly, giving it less of a blue glassy look in exchange for a dark glass bottle with a label. Other than that, the bottle itself looks fairly standard and has attributes similar to the 1957 Coke bottle, namely the vertical ridges on the lower portion of the bottle. Tactics adds several more varieties of Nuka-Cola to the game though, all but one of which has zero effect on the player when consumed. The so-called classic Nuka-Cola is exactly the same except the addiction chance is reduced to 10%, like the original Fallout games. There is a cherry Nuka-Cola that is bright red and is $1 more expensive than a run-of-the-mill Nuka-Cola, 
Nuka-Cola Yellow is a special version of Nuka-Cola because it was not an official Nuka-Cola version. This was described in Tactics as a strange version with an interesting smell made by a mad naked man. And I think most of you know where this is going. I do want to go on a little tangent about this guy because he is a pretty funny Easter egg. He is an old Brotherhood of Steel paladin that went crazy, constantly, and I quote here, doing funny things with his fingers. This character is referring to an ex-administrator at No Mutants Allowed who was highly critical of Fallout Tactics during its development. The reference to his fingers is likely a further reference to the name Rochambeau, which is the name of the character and of this ex-admin. Rochambeau is an alternate name for rock, paper, scissors. Okay, so let's go back to the Nuka-Cola. The last version introduced in Fallout Tactics is far and away the most valuable and is the only kind to have stat changing effects. It is made with the combined dregs of Nuka-Cola with a type of fusion and I must note here, fusion is in quotes, so take that for whatever you will. Besides causing instant addiction, it increases strength, perception, endurance, and agility at the cost of charisma and intelligence. A special encounter in Fallout Tactics will have the player meeting Phil, the Nuka-Cola dude. Based on the name, I would think he's a pretty chill guy, but his dialogue indicates otherwise. Bound by a tradition spanning decades, he is one in a long line of Nuka-Cola stalkers whose sole job is to ride his bike around and refill Nuka-Cola machines. All the while, he mumbles about how much he hates his job, the tradition, and how he has 73 more stops to make. Obviously, this is meant to be whimsical, but I like the idea of a group of people, or maybe even robots, that are still dutifully stocking Nuka-Cola machines out of a sense of duty, or simply the result of programming. I would actually like to think there's some strategic Nuka-Cola reserve since it became so important to pre-war America, and this reserve is used to secretly restock machines across the wasteland. Fallout Tactics also has a Nuka-Cola addiction, although it operates exactly like the addiction in the earlier Fallouts, with no real effect. Fallout 3 and New Vegas see a slight redesign where the major difference in the bottle is the bright red label that is very reminiscent of Coca-Cola bottles. This bottle loses the ridges as well, being more smooth near the bottom, closer to the 1961 Coke bottle redesign. Nuka-Cola becomes much more common in Fallout 3, where finding old derelict Nuka-Cola machines is a regular part of exploring the wasteland. Restoring 10 HP and dosing for 3 rads, they can be useful healing items in the early game. The player can get the ice-cold Nuka-Cola that can only be obtained by the pristine Nuka-Cola machine that can be bought and placed in the player's home. The healing potential doubles to 20 HP, but the value doesn't increase despite this. More curiously, the ice-cold version never warms up, or at least once chilled, it never loses its extra HP bonus and becomes a normal Nuka-Cola no matter how long it sits in the player's inventory. Man, wouldn't that be nice? Let's rationalize this by saying the cooling process reconstitutes something in the drink. The Nuka-Cola Quantum was introduced in Fallout 3 and according to in-game descriptions was so newly released that it was not common across the capital wasteland before the bombs fell. It was also advertised as having twice the calories, twice the carbohydrates, or in this case sugar, twice the caffeine and twice the taste. Nuka-Cola is already advertised as being ridiculously sugary, which might be used to cover the taste of the main ingredient change, the addition of strontium-90. Strontium-90 is a byproduct of fission reactions and is extremely radioactive. It decays via beta decay, which gives off a high-speed electron or positron, which could explain the blue glow. Cherenkov radiation was covered in one of my older videos and is the blue glow that owes its appearance to fast traveling electrons through water. However, the half-life of strontium-90 is 28.8 years, meaning that by the time Fallout 3 takes place 200 years after the Great War, would mean that, if my calculations are correct, there's less than 1% strontium-90 remaining by the time the player character is chugging the drink like a post-apocalyptic frat boy. Strontium-90 decays into yttrium-90, which quickly decays into zirconium-90, which is a stable isotope and the most common isotope of natural zirconium. This would also mean that if our Cherenkov radiation theory is correct, Nuka-Cola Quantum would no longer be blue by the time Fallout 3 takes place. Nuka-Cola Quantum does not heal HP but increases action points by 20 for 10 minutes while dosing for 10 rads. 
There is also a very limited number of bottles in Fallout 3, with 108 in the base game and add-ons with the potential to find more due to random encounters, and small chances for Nuka-Cola machines to spawn quantums. The drink has a 10% chance of causing addiction, which reduces charisma by 1 and radiation resistance by 15. And if all that isn't enough to clue you in on this drink being super unhealthy, it also makes your pee glow. I guess that is the least of your concerns though, when you are drinking 200 year old hyper caffeinated nuclear waste though. I also like that they chose strontium 90 due to it being a common component of nuclear waste, as this would imply nefarious dealings between Nuka Cola and other companies dealing with nuclear waste. Fallout New Vegas has all the different kinds of Nuka Cola found in Fallout 3 and some new ones. The appearance and effects of Nuka Cola, Ice Cold Nuka Cola, and Quantum are all the same, except that Quantum is not found in the base game, only the Lonesome Road add on. They have sleep fighting effects in hardcore mode, likely due to the caffeine. Rum and Nuka is a mixture of, well, rum and Nuka Cola. It increases strength but drops intelligence by one and doses for three rats. Its name is derived from the well known rum and coke. Nuka Quartz is a new flavor introduced in New Vegas and glows white. It has several effects, namely a low light enhancement effect like the cat eye chem, an HP boost, and a damage threshold boost as well. We know very little about this version, like why it was produced, why it seems to only be found in New Vegas, and what makes it glow white. It doses the player for 10 rads, similar to the Nuka Cola Quantum, so we may assume that it gets its glow from some sort of radioactive ingredient. It is very strange to note that this particular drink will make a crunching sound when consumed as opposed to a gulping sound like all the other drink items, and will also make the normal loot stashing sound instead of the bottle stashing sound when picked up. This very well may be due to an oversight, or maybe decades of sitting has crystallized the contents. I mean, we never actually see any liquid, so who knows? Nuka Cola Victory is an orange red glowing beverage that is even rarer than quartz. Where the player can potentially find 26 quartz bottles in the base game and add ons, the player can only find 14 victories. It increases action points and HP while giving a perception penalty and dosing for 10 rads. It acts in a similar capacity as the Nuka Cola Quantum but does not have a chance of addiction. The Victory has the same soundbite quirks as the Nuka Quartz, and we are never told in game what the Nuka Victory special sauce is. It can't be as bad as Fallout Tactics' yellow Nuka Cola though, right? Nuka Cola in Fallout 4 has altered status effects, healing for 20 HP, 10 AP, and 5 rads, becoming all around more useful. The biggest change though is the bottle which is now rocket shaped, fins and all. I actually like this redesign as it is more original and unique than previous bottles. Fallout 4 added Nuka Cherry which has similar effects to New Vegas' Victory Drink, although not as extreme. It adds 50 HP and 25 AP while dosing for 5 rads and started life as Merle's Very Cherry Soda before Nuka Cola bought them out and rebranded the popular soda into Nuka Cherry. Nuka Quantum, which was only supposed to be in the capital region, is found in the Commonwealth due to its proximity to Nuka World, where much of it was bottled. It increases HP by a whopping 400 hit points and AP by 100 which is incredibly high. Unlike Fallout 3, Quantums will respawn in the Commonwealth and the color is more of a purplish blue than the Quantums in the Capital Wasteland. All three of these have ice cold variants which increases their stats enough to definitely be worth it. The Nuka World DLC dialed up the Nuka Cola Insanity to 12. Not only did it introduce many variants, it then allowed players to combine different Nuka Colas into named variants. For the sake of brevity, I will not cover these in as much detail as I have the others, but you came here for the sodas of Fallout, and with Adam as my witness, I will deliver. Nuka Cola Quartz and Nuka Cola Victory are featured at Nuka World and is the only East Coast location offering these drinks. Quartz increases AP by 240 and dosing for 15 rads and victory heals for an astonishing 840 HP while also dosing for 15. They glow the same color as the versions in Fallout New Vegas with modified labels and the victory gets a new star spangled look. Nuka Cola Dark is Nuka Cola's foray into the alcoholic beverage market and is the signature cola taste combined with rum with a 35% alcohol content. It adds 1 to strength and endurance while giving a perception penalty, 
It also has a 15% chance of addiction, which will result in minus one perception. Nuka-Cola Orange is, wouldn't you know, their orange flavored offering that increases HP by 100, AP by 50, and 25 to radiation resistance. Nuka Grape was originally Grape Pearl Soda before it was bought out by Nuka-Cola and rebranded. The ingredients were not changed except where Nuka-Cola could cut costs, and like any good corporation, they cut those costs. It heals for 100 HP and 50 AP, but the most impressive part is that it reduces the player's radiation count by 400 rads, which is 100 more than Radaway. All these have a common trait in that they do not irradiate the player, which is curious. Nuka-Cola Wild is their root beer flavored drink. Even though it wasn't advertised as much, it was meant to be a direct competitor to Sunset Sarsaparilla. Nuka-Cola had attempted to buy out Sunset Sarsaparilla, but failed to do so and so looked to take their market share with their own drink. This drink isn't impressive stat-wise, giving HP and AP identical to Nuka-Cola and dosing for 5 rads as well. This would be the version of Nuka-Cola I would most look forward to trying, and it gets no love from Bethesda. Get your priorities straight, Todd. Now onto the mixes, which can be obtained at the Nuka World Mixing Station by providing the necessary Nuka Colas to have mixed. Starting with the Nuka Cola, that's Nuka Cola, not Nuka Cola. It is created with original Nuka Cola and Nuka Cola Cherry, giving 200 HP and 50 AP. Nuka Berry increases Nuka Cola, Nuka Cherry, and Nuka Grape into a concoction, increasing HP by 200, AP by 50, and decreasing rads by 500. Nuka Bomb Drop is, unsurprisingly, alcoholic. But what is surprising is that even though it consists of a Nuka Cola, Nuka Dark, Bourbon, Rum, and Vodka, it does not have a stat penalty like Nuka Dark or other alcoholic beverages, and also has no addiction chance... somehow. Nuka Buzz is just combining two Nuka Cola Wilds, which sounds like you would end up with two bottles worth of Nuka Cola Wild. However, the mixer must have a concentration process, as all the flavor of two are concentrated into one. It has an HP boost of 35 and an AP boost of 125. Nuka Cooler is a potent green brew of Quartz, Victory, and Quantum, resulting in a crazy high boost of 1200 hit points, plus 50 to max hit points, 349 action points, and plus 20 to maximum action points. Nuka Fancy combines Nuka Cola Wild and Nuka Cherry together to get a 100 HP and 100 AP boosting beverage that I would actually be curious to try. I like cherry flavored things and I like root beer. I also like ice cream and popcorn, but it doesn't guarantee mixing the two would taste any good. Nuka Free combines Nuka Cola and dirty water. Why you would ever do this, I have no idea, but somehow it increases HP by 130 and does not dose for any rads or give you dysentery. If the mixer is concentrating the ingredients, then what exactly is being concentrated in the dirty water? Sediment? Bacteria? Hydrogen and oxygen atoms? This one is just the most confusing of them all. Nuka Fruity is a step above the Nuka Berry and mixes all the fruit flavored Nuka Colas into something that heals for 200 HP, 50 AP, minus 500 rads, and plus 25 to rad resistance. Nuka Hardy combines Nuka Cola and Nuka Dark with a carrot and tato, increasing HP by 125, AP by 50, and adding 25 to carry weight, which is pretty good. I envision this like an alcoholic V8 vegetable drink, which is not a bad idea. I'm gonna go patent that right after recording this. Nuka Lixer is the first mixture <laughs> that uses a chem, Mixing Nuka Cola, Nuka Orange, and a Medex, it increases HP by 100, radiation resistance by 25, and damage resistance by 35. That is 10 more damage resistance than from a Medex alone, although you don't benefit from a poison resistance that Medex offers. However, you suffer from none of the drawbacks of Medex, and there is a zero chance of addiction, so this seems the best way to increase your damage resistance. It is also the most true to the old soda mixtures where they were mixing all sorts of things, including what we would now consider illicit drugs, into their drinks. Getting the Nuka Love recipe from Evan in Nuka World gives the player the chance to mix an awesome pinkish purplish drink. It restores 100 HP and 300 AP and makes all characters that interact with you for 30 seconds fall in love with you. 
Just kidding. No one loves you. Except me. Going to the Nuka World Power Plant will give the player the Nuka Power recipe, which mixes two Nuka Darks and one Nuka Cola, increasing carrying weight by a whopping 60 pounds. Nuka Punch is an awesome red color and is made by mixing Nuka Grape, Nuka Cola Orange, Nuka Cherry, and Quartz. This increases max action points by 10, adds 30 to max HP, heals for 100 HP, adds 50 AP, and decreases rads by 500. Nuka Ray is yellow and is made by mixing Nuka Cola Orange and Nuka Cola Victory, which are both orange and honestly should probably, I don't know, result in an orange beverage, but I'm no color expert so don't quote me here. It recovers 999 HP and increases rad resistance by 25. The green Nuka Rush is a variation of Nuka Ray, combining a victory and a wild together. It heals for 999 HP again, but increases AP by 40. After getting the recipe from Dry Rock Gulch, Nuka Sunrise can be made with a Nuka Orange and Cherry, increasing HP by 100, AP by 50, and rad resistance by 25. Nuka Twin is a normal Nuka Cola and a Wild mixed together, giving 100 HP and 50 AP. Nuka Void is the coolest sounding and nicest color with a dark blue, where Nuka Dark and Nuka Quantum are combined. Carry weight goes up by 25, max HP up by 30, and max AP up by 10, but no actual HP or AP replenishment. Nuka Extreme is an awesome green and purple, and is made by combining a Nuka Grape and a Quantum together. Max AP goes up by 10, max HP goes up by 30, and 500 rads are removed. Lastly, we come to the Nuka Side, which is every single Nuka Cola combined into one. As one would expect, the effects are impressive. Turning white, the drink restores 1,200 HP, 300 AP, max AP increases by 20, max HP by 50, increases rad resistance by 35, and carry weight by 35. That is seriously impressive, and the name is likely derived from a popular colloquial term for mixing all the drinks at a fountain machine, which is called suicide or a suicide. I'm not sure because I was not even aware of this. Where I grew up, we just called this stupid. Fallout 76 introduces its own unique versions of Nuka-Cola and, spoilers for Fallout 76, Nuka-Cola plays an important role in the Wastelander storyline. If you don't want me to spoil it for you, go ahead and skip to the timestamp specified in the description. The first Nuka variant is Nuka Cranberry because of course it is. This drink started off life in a brainstorming session at the Kanawa Nuka plant, where it thankfully won out over ideas like sparkling celery juice water, which I suspect is a reference to the health craze of drinking celery juice in 2018. Being cranberry flavored because big cranberry can really throw its weight around in West Virginia, this has an effect we haven't seen before. It adds a 2% bonus to XP earned and adds 40 HP. The drink actually had not officially released in the area, but some early samples can be found around the Appalachian region. The next entry has the spoilers, and I think I've given you enough time to navigate away. The next unofficial version of Nuka-Cola can go by three different names. Nuka-Cola Vaccinated, Nuka-Cola Scorched, or, my personal favorite, Nuka-Cola My Blood Is In It. The player character, or the overseer, can create a vaccine to the Scorched Plague by isolating immunity from the player's DNA and splicing those genes into yeast, which can then mass produce the inoculating liquid. This is bottled at the previously mentioned Kanawa plant, and the player has the choice of the aforementioned names. One is obviously superior to the rest though. These Nuka Colas reduce damage taken from the Scorched, and are meant to be the means by which the vaccine can be mass distributed to all the settlers and raiders in Appalachia. The drinks will also increase HP by 20% for 2 seconds, and then 2% for 20 seconds. Nuka Shine has some of the craziest effects of any Nuka variant mentioned so far. It was created by a student at vault University from a member of the Ada Psi fraternity. The student, named Lewis, originally concocted it in an attempt to raise money to fund his crippling Nuka-Cola collector addiction. When the effects were observed, Word spread and soon it became well known throughout the university, making the fraternity very popular and leading to the establishment of a speakeasy in the basement of Big Al's tattoo parlor. That escalated quickly. 
It is shown in a cork-topped bottle, like many old liquors, and a very snazzy yellow and black label, which seems a bit excessive considering it was being used to just make college students blackout drunk. Made from a high-proof alcohol that used Nuka-Cola Quantum and extra nuclear material, you know, for the spice, it leads to a 50% boost to AP regeneration, 30 rads, which is surprisingly low, a 9% chance for disease, which is particularly high, minus 80 to sprint speed, and plus 25 to fall speed, which is unusual. This is for the fresh and unfermented version though, because if the player ferments it properly, it increases unarmed damage by 100%, which I feel like is an allusion to drunken college fights. And damage resistance increases by 25, along with all the benefits of the unfermented version. The best is yet to come though, since Nuka Shine will make you pass the freak out and wake up in one of 36 locations throughout Appalachia. You will then suffer penalties to strength, endurance, and agility for some time after waking up. Apparently, there is a sugarless version that does not make people pass out. Because, of course, the sugar makes people pass out, not the high-proof alcohol or the nuclear freaking waste that is added. An interesting note is that examining the chemical equation shows the chemical formulas for what we can only assume are ingredients, including ethanol, caffeine, carbonic acid, and uranium hexafluoride. One of those is not like the other. Uranium hexafluoride is used in a gaseous form to enrich uranium, and therefore would, or at least should, be difficult for anyone, let alone some poor college student, have easy access to. What is interesting is that it will not react with too many things, but in contact with water will react and create hydrofluoric acid and uranyl fluoride, the former of which has a pH of 2.12 and the other is a radioactive compound that you don't want in, on, or near you. The funny thing is that if uranium hexafluoride is an ingredient, it is definitely forming hydrofluoric acid and uranyl fluoride, which would just wreck you. Again, I feel compelled to ask the question, the sugar is the ingredient that makes people pass out? Wow, I cannot believe we actually got through all the Nuka-Cola related information. If the connection to Coca-Cola isn't apparent by now, then you need to lay off the Nuka Dark because even the name of the inventor of Nuka-Cola, which was John Caleb Bradburton is a variation of Coke's inventor, John Stith Pemberton. What I would like to know is, since the rise of Coke in our world and the rise of Nuka-Cola in Fallout's world are more than a century apart, did Coke actually exist in the Fallout universe? I can see a few possibilities. One, Coke was never invented and the whole cola craze was kicked off by Nuka-Cola a century later than in our world. Two. Coke was invented in the Fallout universe, but fell out of favor and Nuka-Cola rose to prominence and that is why we only encounter Nuka-Colas. Third, Coca-Cola and Nuka-Cola existed simultaneously, but upon Nuka-Cola becoming America's preferred soft drink, in a pro-gamer move, Coca-Cola kicked off the Great War and murdered the planet. I could see any of these as possibilities. Vim is a brand of soda that was introduced in Fallout 4's Far Harbor DLC. The company was started well before Nuka-Cola being founded in 1931. Nuka-Cola actually had made efforts to buy Vim and it almost went through before the Great War disrupted those plans. This soft drink was so popular in Maine that it almost became the state's soda, so it was preferred over Nuka-Cola in this region. The normal Vim flavor is superior stat-wise to Nuka-Cola, healing for 30 HP and 10 AP and no radiation. I know there is a debate regarding consumables and whether they started out radioactive or became radioactive due to the Great War, but it seems like Nuka-Cola is radioactive from the factory since Vim has been marinating in a radioactive fog for who knows how long and is still not radioactive. Vim Refresh is a green beverage that is apparently flavored with apples but features a lime on the label. At any rate, it offers increased stat boosts with 50 HP and 35 AP replenishment and an increased AP recovery rate for 60 seconds. Vim Quartz was a bubblegum flavored drink that glows a soft yellowish color. There is no explanation for this glow and it can't be due to radioluminescence since the drink is not radioactive. It restores 75 HP, 25 AP and adds 15 to carry weight. 
The name is obviously of particular interest because there is a Nuka-Cola named Quartz. There was actually a legal battle between the two over the name, and Nuka-Cola ended up winning out. However, this is suspect because Fallout 4 reveals a lot of underhanded tactics employed by Nuka-Cola to steal intellectual property. The most unappetizing version of him, the Captain's Blend, was not in full production, and the label says as much with TEST written out in large font. It was made in an attempt to capture the essence of Maine, and although apparently it did not smell bad, focus groups liked it a lot and described its taste as fishy. That is a good description, since apparently the main flavor came from lobster tails, which sounds fishy. <laughs> no, that, that's staying in there. I'm not cutting that out. The only downside of this was apparently it made people smell like an ocean pier, which has a beneficial effect in the wasteland. Mirelurks are less aggressive towards the player due to this scent. And the beverage increases HP by 600 and AP by 100, while decreasing charisma by 2 because you smell like a pile of fish guts. Similar to Nuka-Cola, Vim is a not-so-subtle nod to a real-life soda that is popular in the Northeast called Moxie. In fact, their names are synonyms, with Moxie referring to determination or nerve, and Vim meaning something similar and is most often heard in the saying, Vim and Vigor. The labels are also a bit similar, and both Vim and the Real World Moxie were initially concocted and sold as health tonics, like many old sodas. I actually got the chance to get a Moxie and try it for the first time, and I actually liked it. If I had to choose between a Coke and a Moxie, I would likely go for the Moxie, unless I was eating some kinds of foods that I think would go best with the Coke. Now, let's get to the darling of New Vegas, Sunset Sarsaparilla. Advertised as the most popular drink in the West, which is questionable since it isn't present in most of California and a big chunk of Nevada as evidenced by Fallout and Fallout 2, but it can be found all over New Vegas and the surrounding areas. A brown bottle with a pretty unassuming label. It is obviously a sarsaparilla, which for those that are not familiar with sarsaparilla beers is pretty closely related to root beer. The primary ingredient for the real world beverage varies from region to region. In Asia, the Smilax Ornata plant provides the distinct taste, while in the US, artificial flavors that mimic birch oil is commonly used. It was much more common in 19th century America and has since fallen out of favor, but it is one of my favorite sodas. The drink heals for 50 HP and does not irradiate the player unless the specifically named irradiated Sunset Sarsaparilla is consumed, which can be found in highly irradiated areas like Camp Searchlight. No other versions of Sunset Sarsaparilla exist, and once again, Nuka-Cola attempted to buy them out at a certain point. When that was unsuccessful, a so-called study went public, claiming that there were a variety of side effects for those that consumed the product. Although this study was disputed by Sunset Sarsaparilla, the company tried to improve its image by coming up with the Festus robot, who will also mention side effects that include kidney damage, nausea, digital numbness, anxiety, loss of visual acuity, dizziness, occasional nosebleeds, joint inflammation, tooth decay, sore throat, bronchitis, organ rupture, and halitosis. So maybe there is something to those previous allegations. In the game, these side effects are actually never seen, and there is a 5% chance of getting a star bottle cap when drinking a Sunset Sarsaparilla. Once 50 caps are found, a prize can be redeemed at the Sunset Sarsaparilla headquarters. The prize is not this big wasteland treasure, like so many believe. Rather, it is an origin story that Festus tells the winner, and this origin story has discrepancies that don't really add up. Like the claim that before Sunset Sarsaparilla, the only options people had were water and Nuka-Cola. Sunset Sarsaparilla was founded in 1918, a century before Nuka-Cola would even be invented. This was apparently an Easter egg that Josh Sawyer explained was related to rumors he heard as a child that if you collected Tootsie Pop wrappers and sent 100 of these that had a young boy shooting an arrow at a star on them, that the company would send you a letter detailing the founding of the company. Found in vending machines all over New Vegas, this drink has become a part of Fallout New Vegas' legacy, like Nuka-Cola has to the Fallout series. And with that, we have covered all the soft drinks of the Fallout series, but I have more videos to come that will cover the other drinks of Fallout. I won't be doing a normal comment highlight for my last video. I went over the types of Fallout fans. 
It has been a lot of fun to read through them though and see all the discussion because it proves an adage I heard several times in college that all models are wrong and my classification scheme is no exception. The fan base is incredibly dynamic and some of you were wondering how I would classify myself within my own scheme. I would probably end up being a Bethesda Save the Franchise xenophobe, although I like Fallout 3 and New Vegas equally. I started with Fallout 3 and came to the franchise late, playing it for the first time in 2013. I spent a lot of time playing Fallout 3 on the PlayStation and fell in love with the dark atmosphere cut with humor in a retro futuristic setting. I moved on to Fallout New Vegas and saw what all those elements plus incredible storytelling and choice making could be tying the game in my mind with Fallout 3. Fallout 4 came out not too long later, and I played a lot of that game while agreeing with a good amount of the criticisms it received. I played the first and second Fallout after Fallout 4, and after a learning curve, really came to appreciate those games and the worlds that they built. I started, but did not spend a lot of time in tactics, and really need to jump back in and finish it. Thank you all for your comments and support, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care of yourselves and may Adam's glow illuminate your paths.